Message received at 10.54 p.m. February 18 from 51969. Hi, Pete. It's uh, Carl Gilbert calling from Ontario, Canada, one hour east of the Detroit border. I just wanted to call and thank you, man, because you're a good teacher. I'm glad you're out there teaching the kids that don't have a chance to to really learn from the other bullshit stuff we see on TV. But you know, your stuff is uh, on hands and it's uh, right to the point and it's very good. Uh, I have a shop here myself, but uh, um, I, I really enjoy watching your work and uh, the things you teach on TV is very good. But you take care um, and uh, thank you very much. Okay, Pete, you take care. Bye. End of message. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. See what kind of situation it, you have when you're doing this type of work, and it's not a good situation. Okay, so what we need to do is we are going to go ahead, and I'm just going to do a real quick overview of how to fix a fender like this properly. What's up? Just listening, dude. How to fix the fender properly uh, instead of this slag weld bullshit. We're going to go ahead and go through the steps. So the first thing that we're going to do is what we got here, we got a used fender. This is our used fender that the owner specifically purchased for uh, this job. This is a fender that if we need any pieces off it or whatever, we can go ahead and get that. All right, so what we're gonna do is we are gonna cut that section off right there and we're gonna oversize it. Now, when I say oversize, I'm gonna cut more off than I really need. And the reason I'm gonna do that is that way, we're gonna have a lot of extra meat on the end of it to play with to make it fit precisely where we want it. So we're gonna cut that whole section off and then once we get that done, we can go ahead and get rid of this fender. Where are you gonna, are you gonna cut that with? I'm gonna use my cutting wheel to cut it with. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off. You need to hold that. Okay, now that we got this piece cut off, what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and clean this up. And uh, we're not going to use all this, all right? What I'm trying to say here is that this is uh, an oversized piece. And it's important that when you do this type of work, you make it oversized, and then you're going to cut it down to fit where we cut out. All right, so we know this corner is bad, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut this out right here. Do you see where I'm going with that? Yeah. But I also noticed right here in this area, um, right here that we got extensive Bondo right here now this is that all metal stuff that he's talking about this is that metal Bondo or whatever the fuck he wants to call it that cracks and it's bullshit yeah. alright I know he didn't want to hear about that but I'm not gonna sit here and lie and cheat somebody when I know for a fact that's junk so what that's telling me is that there's Bondo on this corner right here so if I cut it off here then what's gonna happen is all this area is gonna be Bondo so the first thing we're gonna do is get my little two-inch grinder We'll hook that up to the air, 
and then what we'll do is we'll grind this area out on the uh, front side and see where our bondo is and what we're looking at. Okay, while Darren is taking that out, 903 guy, we're going to go ahead and compensate on that. Um, 903 Darren, there you go. He's taking out the bolts on that. Uh, we got to get this bucket out. This is a headlight bucket that is uh, bolted in here. Thank God it's bolted because on the new cars they're welded in now. And the way that we're doing this is I went ahead and ground this down past the uh, Bondo. Now we brought it down to bare metal so we know where and how we're going to actually do this. So now a lot of times when you do this, you can actually lay the uh, new piece on top of the old piece. We won't be able, what the fuck's going on, dude? Okay. So we won't be able to do that with this due to the fact that it's got this little pocket right here that's not going to work for us. So we're going to go ahead and measure this out. Once we get that measured out, then we'll be able to set this on here, find our contour line that all matches up, and that's going to tell us where we can cut to replace. And another thing you want to do is always make marker points. Like, do you see these two holes I got? I can use that as a marker point. All right, that's a marker point to tell me how far I can go on this one. So we're going to use our tape as a straight line. I'm going to cut the hole in half, just like this. Or you know what? We really don't even need to go that far. All we need to do is come up here. Because um, I see where they welded it together right here in this area. Do you see that right there? See, that's a weld, okay? Somebody welded that. And uh, so we're going to go right above the hole. Let's just go right in the middle of it. Fuck it. And then we're going to come across just like this. Make it as straight as we can. All right, do you see what I'm doing here? Yeah. But I don't want to go that far. I don't want to go that high uh, because uh, we're going to put a flange on this. This is going to be the flange style, so I'm actually going to come up just a little higher. I'm going to come up right above that fucking hole. And now we can go ahead and cut that off. Now, once I cut this off, we got to be really, really precise on cutting it. You don't want to mess up because you want a nice, clean, straight line all the way across. So we'll go ahead and take our cutter and cut it off if Darren can hold that. See what I just did there, Mr. WLL guy? Yeah. What did I just do? You just cut it precisely in a straight line. That's right, but how did I get that straight line? You used the tape. I used the fucking tape to make a straight line. Do you see how important tape is around the body shop area over at my friend Pete's? Yeah. Okay. We're going to pull that tape off. Watch this. Bam. Now that bitch should... Okay. Put now we're going to go ahead and get the air hose. I'm going to clean the back side of this, get all this slag off. Watch this, bud. Now, once that's done, what are we going to do then? We've been over this a million times with John. What, what's the next procedure? Think. Yeah, think, bud. What's the next procedure? Now we put this bitch on? No, we don't. What do we got to do to that before we even think about it? Flange tool, my friend. Flange tool. That's right, 903. Get the fucking flange tool. Yes. Right below mini. Right below mini. There you go. So we're going to take the flange tool now. The way that you use this flange tool, you've got to use it properly. Or the stair step's going to be at the wrong angle. Okay? So you take your flange tool and you set it on there. Do you see the flange? Yeah. That's going the wrong way. Or is it going the right way? Going That's going the right way because you want the flange on the outside because we're going to overlap. See, when I take this piece, it is going to overlap on here like this. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So you take the flange tool just like I did. Now, do you want to do that, 903? Yeah. Would you like to try that? Yeah. Come over on this side so you can see it. And let me explain it to you. Hold on. All right. You pull the trigger. Okay, now move a hair half away. Okay, well, you're doing something wrong here. Let me see. Can I look at it? You're leaning on it, dude. You can't have any pressure on it. Stand right here where I'm at. 
Now go all the way down. There you go. Okay, hold on. You got to overlap them. Okay. All right, so this is the right way to fix this kind of shit, is using a flange tool. Darren's never done this before. He doesn't know anything about a flange tool, but guess what? He's fucking doing it. All the way as far as you can go. Right there. Thank you. Okay, now I want you to start here and go back. We got to do it twice. I don't want that done. We're going to butt weld that in. Start here and go back. Start there and go back. There you go. So when you're using a flange tool on old metal such as our 1960 Impel, it's very important to go over it two or three times because that's very thick metal and you want to make sure that you get a nice, good, even flange. Um, a flange tool is a handy tool. A flange tool is your friend when it comes to doing this work right here. Go over it again? No. Yeah, go over it one more time just real quick. Just get the hang of it. You might have to use it again, bud. Bam, 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 bam. There you go. You have to let out on the trigger all the way, bud. All right, now that you got your nice clean flange there, what would be next? Now we're ready to put this bitch No, we're not ready to put that oh, on. No, we Why aren't we ready, WLL? This is all fucked up. That's right. So we got to get our cleaner out here, which would be this. Okay, let me have that. And we got to clean this baby out. cut this piece off and we went down to the second hole on our uh, existing piece which is rotted out. We can see that it's rotted out. It's a pile of shit and it's fucking trash, bitch. So then we also made our flange which uh, Darren learned how to do that very properly. So this is our hole that we're looking at. This hole right here is our mark line hole that we need to line up. So now that we cut off the end of our fender, we can go ahead and slide this down on top of it and line our hole up just like that and then everything should fall in place to where it is properly fitted. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, before we make any marks, what we need to do is take some C-clamps. You see what that is? And what this is going to do, this is going to help us make our marks properly where we need them. See where that hole is right there? We're going to clamp that just like that, okay? And then it should fall into place because it's a molded fender from the factory. We'll take another pair of these pliers here and now we can see that everything's fitting good. Now, more than likely what we would do is we would actually take our scribe tool and we would usually scribe this right here on the front. Let's scribe. That's a scribe tool. Scribe means that you're going to draw a line like this. Oh. And then when you take it off, of course, it'll be a nice, Even sharp line. line. Yeah. Yeah. It'll match what we cut here. But on this situation, since we went ahead and flanged it first, we're going to go ahead and mark the back of this. So once again, I've lined everything up. Everything is looking good. I'm going to take my flange tool. If you can back up just a little bit. There you go. All right. All right. And then I'm going to go ahead and scribe the back of our fender, just like that, and then what that's going to do, alright, when I take this off, if you can back it up a little bit, there, Darren, alright, give everybody a view back here, there you go, is if you look right there, you can see the scribe line, see it? Mm -hmm. Now we're not going to cut it there, that's not where we're going to cut it, okay? Because we got to compensate for what? We got to compensate for our flange. Because we want this to be on top of that. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So watch. I'm so frustrated and pissed off about this bullshit that I wasn't thinking. See? I wasn't thinking. Now I could come back and cut all that off, but I'm not going to. I'm going to keep proceeding. So if you come over here, come over here. Alright, we're going to measure our flange, and it's a half an inch. 
Do you see there? Mm -hmm. That's a half an inch flange is what we got. We are going to go ahead and add three-eighths of an inch to this right here, bud. So what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and add three-eighths of an inch, just like this. I'm going to make random marks, because this has got to be pretty precise, dude. What do I got here, bud? Two-inch tape, man. It's not two-inch. Or one-inch tape, my bad. It's three-quarter, but mm -hmm. close enough, bud. The small tape. That's what there you go. Have. The small tape. That's a good angle. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find my marks and I'm going to go straight across just like this. Because tape is very, very useful in our environment. And then what I can do is I can cut that off with my cutter, back it up, I can go ahead and cut that off with my cutter and then take my grinder after I cut it and manipulate it to fit in there like it's supposed to be. Okay, now that we cut our piece out, you can see, remember that line up mark I was talking about? Well, we went 3 eighths down and it ended up in the middle of our hole there. So what we'll do is we will go ahead and set this back on here. And it should be a nice snug fit. And look what we got. All right, let me line that up. Uh, my grinder, hang on. Can you get my welder and bring it over here, please, there? All right, and then once we get all that cleaned up, we'll go ahead and slide that on there precisely to where it matches up, just like that. And I see that it's a little bit too long still in this area here. Can you look at this here for me, Darren, and see what you think about that? That is what you call a nice flange right there. And now you see why you use a flange when you replace pieces such as this. And you can also see on the back where the piece fits properly and it will look very, very professional once we weld it up. All right, what we're doing now is we got our piece fit on there perfect. We've already showed you that. Uh, this is going to be a flange weld, but this corner right here, because we couldn't bring our flange around this corner, I'm going to cut it off. I'm going to cut this off right at this line. I'm using a pen to make my mark. Do you see that? All right, so I'm going to draw a nice line right here. Then what I'm going to do is take my cutting wheel. Now watch how I do this. I'm going to go right to where the flange stops, just like this. And then I'm going to cut this off just like this. Come on over here. Well, hold on. Let me show you this here real quick. Do you see how that lays in there perfect now? Mm -hmm. We don't have no stress on it whatsoever. All right, so we set our piece on there. It's like a puzzle now, see? See there? Look at that. And look how that lines up perfect, dude. Yeah, looking nice. Do you see that right there? Yeah, looking now, nice. Now, what we need to do is we come over here and we repeat our process. Remember I told you right in the middle? Did, that, did, I, did you hear me say that? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to line up our flange right where it's supposed to be. Because that's another re thing. Okay, back up a little bit, Darren. Okay, because that's another thing when you fit these pieces on here. You don't want no stress on this that's going to bend it and warp it. So we couldn't flange around this corner. Remember that? Yeah. All right. Are you watching, listening, and learning? All day. So I am taking my piece and getting it on there, and I'm lining up the middle of this hole. Do you see that hole right there, Darren? Yeah. Look a little closer so everybody else. I'm lining that up and then I'm making sure my flange is right and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and mark that as well. See, just like that and come around. And then I'll take my cutting wheel and I'll cut this corner off so this is going to be a butt weld situation as well. Watch close, bud. we 
clean all our pieces off. Now we can go ahead and fit this on there. Watch that happens. It slides right on. Look at our hole lining up. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Our hole's lined up and our flange fits perfect and everything is going to work out flawlessly. And that is how you replace a part professionally versus bullshit. All right. Let me get this welded up. We're going to go ahead and weld that. And then uh, once we get it welded, we're going to look at it. Okay. Let me get that welded up, Darren. While I'm doing this, you can't be watching, so. And I'll go eat or some shit. Go eat your sandwich, bud. Can you bring a sandwich for lunch? Yeah. Go do that, dude. Okay. So now you see that the flange is going to be a nice waterproof airtight fit. I went ahead and spot welded these right here. I put a couple spot welds. Okay, and then what I'll do now is I will take me some uh, seam sealer. I'll seam seal that up. It'll look professional. Instead of bullshit fucking jack off, motherfucker, piece of shit, two ball bitch cocksucker, mama's in the kitchen cooking red hot shit fucking job. Do you see what we're going here? Do you see this fucking bullshit now? All right, what the fuck is going on? Dude, that's what's it's going fucking on. bullshit. Yeah, Could you do that by yourself? Could you do that by yourself? Could I do that by Be myself? honest. Not yet. Not yet. It'll take you some practice, but you know what? My friend Pete showed you how to fucking do it. Now you know how. The guy that just watched it can get his thumb out of his fucking ass, and he can fucking learn how to do it. Definitely. It's simple. It's not hard. When the owner comes tomorrow, we'll have a talk with him about this and get him on film. And I'm not going to do the body work. This is a nice, easy, simple uh, skim coat body work action here now. I guarantee you, if I took the Bondo out of here, all right, it would probably be about this fucking thick, dude. Oh, I bet. Compared to that shit that was all right. caked on there. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete. We got to go. Um, flange, tool, welding, number one, number 901. Uh, right there, that's it, 903 Darren, guys, got it in his hand, and now he knows how to use a flange tool. Next time you hear somebody say flange tool, say, yeah, I know what the fuck it is. <laughs>